I like the documentation on that one issue that we had with the, the movie first one. Because uh, we don't do it right away. Yeah, and she was trying to go to different social media outlets and, you know, saying how horribly she was treated and technically saying she was discriminated because she was not working with them. And her son was very disgraceful. <laughs> All right. Uh, Lake Field and Nancy just report. I don't see. Oh, yeah, there you go. You're hiding. You're hiding. Uh, the management district met July 30th. 5.30 here at the town hall. Our next uh, scheduled meeting is the uh, annual meeting, August 27th at 7 o'clock. Uh, I submitted a uh, report that was included in the town packet uh, in our discussions. Uh, any questions? No. Um, just briefly, I would like to uh, elaborate on the uh, management district's discussion regarding the zoning at N28 Spanish Bridge Road. Um, the current C4 district is not a random configuration of the estate, as has been stated in the past, but follows the shape, the contours of the land, and was seen as an important factor in protecting local lakes, groundwater resurgence, the documented wetlands along the lake shore, and the sensitive area number seven of Lake Vila, designated by the DNR in 1994. The formation of the zoning districts, including the development of C4 area, was a combined effort of the Water County Zoning Agency, Sewer Pack, South East Wisconsin Regional Planning Commission and the U.S. Geological Survey, which provided the ATLI of the existing conditions in the town. Uh, since 1960, Sewer Pack has also developed primary environmental corridors, which occur in conjunction with this C4 district that protect the most important elements of the region's natural resources. These important elements include the best remaining woodlands, wetlands, and surface water. C4 district also falls within the area where the field is designated as a sensitive area. Uh, and the lake's habitat reinforced by the DNR. With an area further classified as an area of special natural resource interest or as an area. The C4 district designation is not a mistake or a random configuration. Okay. Would you like to do a report? Uh, no need to report tonight. Okay. Library report? Uh, yes. <clears throat> I have a report from two meetings. The first meeting at the East Troy Alliance Public Library, July 9th. 2024. This is an annual meeting, and the product is officer elections. The president will be Christina Murphy, vice president <coughs> Rodney Thomas, secretary Aaron Fremont, treasurer Kathy Brooks. Number two for that meeting will be 2024 to 2027 strategic plan was approved. The second meeting occurred on August 13, 2024. During that meeting, the first item, the library budget for 2025 was approved. The budget includes extending Monday hours from a five o'clock closing to a seven o'clock closing. The budget now goes to the Village of East Troy Board for final approval. Number two from that meeting, Summer programs have been included. The Children's Monday programs reported 748 attendees, 358 total participated in the summer reading program. This is an increase over last year. Number three from that meeting, 
director of Bartoli reported that Prairie Lakes director Steve Post reported that the Wisconsin County Association has agreed on recommended language for joint library funding issues. Post then presented the language and background to the Wisconsin Library Association legislative branch. Number four from that meeting, the library's friends group purchased two <coughs> more chairs for the lower level as more seating was needed to comfortably seat program participants. The refreshed lower level was the featured article in the Prairie Lakes Library System July newsletter. I also have a copy of the library September December schedule. That's all. Planning Commission report regarding the agenda. The Planning Commission met July 10th and the 17th. Uh, we had a request for a conditional use. He already was approved for a rezone. Um, he is working on getting a woodworking shop uh, going, and this is Mr. Mike Greeson. Uh, his request is for PET 1000009. Neighboring Army Lake Road to uh, target um, retired individuals looking to pursue a woodworking hobby, crafters that need tools, and potentially classes for homeschool kids and Boy Scout troops. I would like to make a motion to approve the conditional use request for PET 1000009. Point order, you know, we've been approving the actual resolution of the district and the state uh, resolution approval of the district and the state. Yeah, you're approving the planning commission's recommendation. We have a resolution here that we have. We are not approving the resolution. Okay, so I was a bit confused when I saw the agenda. I looked at it. Uh, all the agendas the last two years, and I've never seen it worded like this. That's Is this something new, or? Because ever since Supervisor Church stepped down from being the planning commission designee, the people that have done it since then have struggled to spit out the proper res the proper motion. The proper motion is to approve the planning commission's recommendation to blah, blah, blah. But those first words have to be said. Okay. But don't you need to have a that because I, I, I see what you're saying. Thank you. Don't you need to have a positive motion though? That I would kind of force me to you're, make a motion. You're making a motion to approve the planning commission's recommendation. That is a positive motion. Okay. Okay, so you did make motions as it stated. We didn't say by Mike Grayson be PG. Motion to approve the planning commission recommendation to approve the conditional use request for PET 1000009 neighboring N9022 Army Lake Road by Mike Greeson, VG2 Surveying. Applicant Daniel McGrady. Okay, second. We have a motion, I'll we'll second. Discussion. For the next uh, item on the agenda, given that the planning commission minutes are defunct, I request that we table this to the next meeting. And given that we got in new information from everyone in the audience. Um, uh, uh, the vote, the vote, okay. What we have before us here? Yes, motion is tabled. The motion to table because of the minutes? 
because of the minutes and the new information, it would be beneficial for the Lake Viewing Management District to review what's been submitted by Mr. Stoss and for us to review uh, some of the recommendations given to us. And as much as I'm sure he's, uh, the applicant is a little mad, I, I would vote to table this because uh, it has been going on for quite a while. Uh, there is a lot of stuff that we need to consider when we make this decision, and I don't think that the town uh, is able to review all this in such a short time frame. The recommendation is that the management district do all that. What is going to be in regards to a commercial use, which is not asked for by the planning district, it's just a rezone. Right, and that's why, like, if we would get the rezone, it would be nice to go into this. Uh, with our eyes open, like what kind of conditions we should put on this property. But there is no conditions on reason. Okay. But what I think uh, the supervisor is uh, saying is there was a request made that the documents that were handed out by the applicant be reviewed by their uh, by, by the way you organization. Right. It just so we can be as transparent as possible and, and have good optics on this. I know people are pretty passionate about this and um, yeah, so. There's some issues that uh, the Lake View Management has why I'd asked. like to come in the middle on this. That's why I'm asking in the third year of war where I'm going here because this, this is never come to the If it were just the letters that the Planning Commission had already reviewed, mm -hmm. uh, I think you'd be correct. Okay. And even the county definitions probably wouldn't need to table for that matter. What caught my interest was the photograph and whether or not it shows a grandfathered use on the parcel in the consideration. And the only reason why that may be pertinent is when you are looking at a potential rezone, you look at lot size, the zoning of neighboring properties, um, the intended use of that parcel, and I think this picture is something new because I don't recall the Planning Commission getting this really considering the, whether or not there was a grandfather of use on that side of the road. I mean, this is kind of new information to me. I, I don't know what the Planning Commission all reviewed. But right. That this, may be a reason. This was it. not submitted to the Planning Commission. This picture was not. Okay. It also has a cabin on there. So this that wasn't even talked about. And that's what I found on the survey. I found it on the survey. I never saw a picture of it. And that's why I think it would be in the best interest of us to table this. Joe, yeah. I, I want to make it clear that the sensitive area of the lake is also a consideration and the three that I mentioned before could aren't the only things that you consider on a rezone. Could you repeat could, those three lot size intended use and what was the third? zoning of neighboring properties? Thank you. And then environmental impacts. More than that. Sure. Yeah. It's, okay. Yeah. And we it to review what they want for conditions also. And I'm not saying that a three zone is gonna pass. I'm saying 
we had a lot of new documentation here that I feel like the board members, it would be beneficial for us to review also and going into the next meeting to make a decision. Well, the question would be then, should the plan commission, I mean, we're, we're talking about information that we're saying, we just get today, the plan commission didn't have the benefit of it, and then we're gonna act on their recommendation without then, there's already, already a motion and a second, so we have to on the table. Right. I have a question about the rezone. If the property was to be rezoned, mm -hmm. at that time, you put conditional uses with it then? Separate. Or that was, the rezone is separate than the conditional use. I would, yes. But I'm asking, if, if it was passed to rezone, mm -hmm. at that time, is that when you stick the conditional uses with it? No, because the plan commission never acted on the conditional use. Right, and I'll go back to plan oh, commission and I'll go back to conditional get it on to them. use restrictions or requirements. It's more than that because I think these are good. Why is he talking? Yeah, I'm so not so all just before talking. Yeah. Finish that and the young man is going to be coming to. I'm just saying that there's a, he's proposing a marina, but there's a covenant. Ordinance on Marines that you have to follow. It's just very complicated. I, I am, I get all this. is a discussion between the board, correct? Yes. Yeah, yes. Okay. But John, so we don't need comments from Yeah, we don't, we don't need it from anybody, but I like John. So, John, you said you had a comment on this last discussion. Well, what I was going to say is in light of the information that I brought to you with the documented picture, with the timestamp of the picture, um, I don't what, have this time stamp on my, I, I showed it to everybody. Okay. They wrote on the they wrote on the back of the uh, pictures. So basically, based on the information that I provided, um, and with your correspondence with Pam Shenzi from the DNR, she basically said that everything that's on that property in 2011, Piers Watercraft moving forward is grandfathered there. So what we're really talking about here is I'm allowed to have ten boats there. Am I going to allow to have commercial boats? Or am I going to have uh, personal boats? We're, we're That's totally, not what we're talking about. Yeah. We're totally off subject here now because that grandfather issue, you're totally wrong. You don't grandfather boats, you grandfather computers. Read the letter. Bears. Bears. Now, but that's not what we're doing here. We're, the request here was for a rezone and condition use. The plan commission acted on the rezone. Okay, what you don't understand is, hey, there's more information here. That's why you made the motion to the table to another month. My concern is, is we're going to have more information here. We're supposed to act here without the plan permission looking at the new information, supposedly new information. Well, I have a problem with that. So we can make that motion yes, yeah. 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 We can make that motion yeah. next We month. can send it back. We, we, we can. That's you can make it after this motion right. is voted on. Right. At this right. point. Right. Yeah. Right. Okay, so call the order. Yeah, we have the motion and a second to, to table this. Right. Okay. Uh, roll call. Go ahead, Stark. Aye. Church, I. Reyes, I. Leonard, I. Like so, okay, well, now the question is what the hell to do with this? Okay. Because the information that we got here to do, to me, is not really talking about rezoning. There's nothing to do with rezoning. Boats, piers, nothing. The request is for a rezone. So, if there's supposedly information here that leads to the question of the rezone, your land commission has to. Look at all this. So I think it should get sent back to them. I don't know why. I mean, it, 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 it would be inappropriate for me to say right now that we have this and we're going to act on this now on our, on our own. That's wrong. That's wrong. So that's why his motion was made. Yes. Yeah. That's why I made the motion so we can review it. And I can talk to you guys like him and, and Joel Cook and see, like, Get, get a little bit of info, more information here. That's all I'm asking you think for, a little more time. Yes, to, to, to table it and it yes, like, that's I done. understand that, but we now need a motion to send it back to the planning I commission. don't want to do that. I don't feel it's it's, it's good yet. We no. can send it back next month after we review this. After we review it? Yes. I didn't mean to No, that, that makes no sense. Because yeah, it came it. to the planning commission from us, it needs to go back yes. to the planning commission. It has to. All right, I made a motion that we send this uh, 
the more she would have been. She made it. Yeah. No. Did you send it back to the black commission? Right. And then right. at that time, well, whatever John would want to say, you have to submit it to the bank under that I have to resubmit a new application? No. No. Oh. You gave to the board oh. whatever yeah. Yeah. before planning commission. Yes, and that would also mean that anybody else that had other information would also have to submit theirs. Okay, and then at the we same a little bit here. Right. And then at the same time mm -hmm. that's gonna give uh Supervisor Johnner and uh Jen from the plan, uh planning commission, that's gonna give them time to uh review the tapes. Uh, adapt the minutes so the minutes match the videos. It's all in part well, it's not going to be Jen oh, and me. It's, it's going to be the planning commission. The whole planning committee. Right. It has to make right. amendments to it. Because the. In to those amendments. Right. When I watched the videos and I read the minutes, there were a little bit of discrepancies. It was pretty close, but there were some indifferences. Yeah. I mean, again, you want to ask me about it, right? Of I course. Mean, the record, though, I mean, the tape is there. It's all there. I, I watched it a couple times. Sorry, did someone second the motion to return it to the planning commission? Thank you. Sorry, do we have a motion and a second? Yeah. Any more discussion? Okay, what was the motion? To send it back to the planning commission for the review of the submitted document. More work with the new. Yes. Okay, I have a motion to send it back to the planning commission. All favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. Motion carried. All right. Uh, next item is request to Walworth County to address the highway safety concerns that still to Walworth County now. Um, there's several moving parts on this. Chief, can you talk to us a little bit? Yeah. Um, first of all, the committee uh, already gave some information saying that um, they have a lot, they have a, book, like, a new design coming up on this. And the, the <coughs> Number two, just to uh, cover it. Uh, Jim Hill's going to just give me a call. Uh, that we have a motion. I'm not in tomorrow. We're on the record for the board saying, hey, county, please look at the safety at this intersection. You can say things like, you know, look at the speed limit, look at the design of that intersection, all of that. But we have to go on record saying we request as a county to have the county highway safety committee not only look at it, but make appropriate changes to our civil time. Okay, so where you, the words that you have when you discussed it with the committee. So, uh, went to the, the Highway Safety uh, Committee meeting, um, and at that point, uh, Supervisor Reyes and her husband were able to speak. Um, at that time, the board kind of deferred to me. Um, to, to talk about the intersection, point out some of the uh, inconsistencies um, at the, there. Uh, long short of it, I don't remember the magic words off the top of my head, but I know what I said uh, prompted uh, the, the commissioners because having been part of that uh, governing body, there's certain magic words that they need to hear in order to get it on the agenda to take a closer look. Um, after that was, was done, uh, Mr. Huff informed us all that uh, that in Highway L is under uh, review for 2028, 20, 27 or 28, I don't remember which one, two or three years out, at which point he uh, wanted to bring to the attention of, and possibly have that intersection with an engineer. I'm not an engineer. I don't know how you make a five-point intersection, a four-point intersection, um, but that's kind of what that needs for um, some setbacks, especially with the school there. Um, it is my humble opinion that um, I have enough uh, evidence, uh, not necessarily from traffic crash data, which is what they really like to have at the highway safety, uh, everything from Wisconsin DOT is very crash data driven. Um, but uh, with the layout of the road, with the hill, with the speed limit, with the school, I think it's fairly reasonable <coughs> to look at a potential 35 mile an hour school zone approaching that intersection, especially with it's not a normal five point because of the offsets. 
uh, down by the village of Walworth Highway 14. If you've ever gone from Walworth to Darien, there's a six point intersection. So that is a true cross with a road down the middle. You have good sight. Is this the side of Darien? No, that, 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 this is right outside the village of Walworth. It's a six point intersection, but those intersections are symmetrical. So when you think of intersection as the cross and then it has a road going straight through the middle, this is wonky, to say the least. Stone School goes this direction, Al goes at a, at a slightly different angle, and then Miramar hits it at another weird or strange angle, which creates really palatious spots. So even where the highway shop, I believe, recently painted stop lines, if you, in all good faith, came to a complete stop at the stoplight as required by Wisconsin law and went, you're going to cause a crash because you have to literally go another car length out into the road to look left towards McQuanagle to see if there's anything coming. I was just going to say that. And so by definition of that road, it clearly needs to be re-engineered and anybody from the commission that would take a leisurely drive out there and right now it's time of day and how we don't have more crashes at that intersection i have no idea how we don't have more crashes I know we have more new well you have, right exactly we have, have a lot the, of new misses you have the sun and that tree that yeah. also factor into the hazardness of that intersection. right and that tree is Far enough off the right of way that the highway shop kind of sort of has to ask permission to cut right. some of those branches back. Which I went there the other day and it looked like they did cut some of those things. They, 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 they I gotta test that they are. Yeah, they're up a little. Yeah, they're probably five foot. I'm guessing roughly. They they, they, they may they have know. done something, but I know that the homeowner and it's their tree, right? They have some say in that. The so. resident was here this evening, but I think she gave up on it. Oh, oh. okay. <laughs> uh, but but yeah, there, it, it's going to be under review, and I think, like I said, at a minimum, we should be able to get them to seriously consider a speed limit change yes, at the school cause, there. Because that part can be done relatively quickly. Right. The redesign of that, I mean, we're talking a long time to still, probably four or five years from now, that's not acceptable. So, Speed limit, especially now with the ATV rental potential, yeah. that should be an action that they can do quicker. So the motion that you were on here should state that, including look, reviewing uh, the speed limit at that location. Absolutely. Well, do you have anything? Um, well, I'd like to just comment. I, as the chief mentioned, we were there. I was there with them. I believe they said they will be on the October agenda already. Um, they have a date for that, and as they said, they were looking at um, 27 or 28, I think they might be around about potentially. Um, but when our request as residents was, let's say, the speed limit to 35 and add flashing lights um, on both sides for the intersection. Um, so I don't know exactly how it is in the agenda. And, and I can just yeah, yeah. give the, the board's information. If the board wanted flashing lights, my suggestion would be uh, to check your budget and see if you could go have these uh, with uh, solar and uh, the county would be open to that. I know some situations have come up when I was part of that committee uh, down by Lake Geneva and when the municipality has put some skin in the game, they like skin in the game instead of just having the county or the state uh, foot the whole thing. So that's just my opinion uh, for you guys to consider. That's totally up to you. But I know that they listen if you're like, hey, if we want flashing lights, we're willing to help. To what extent you want to help, that's up to you folks. But I know that that puts a little skin in the game and that, that they pay attention to that. All right. So we need we need board action necessary with the town hall as a town as a whole that we're requesting Walworth County to look at that intersection as well as potentially, you know. And could a board member draft that or do we have to go to the or No, I think we just make the motion right here. 
I'm trying to look at uh, potential costs of replacing these. I made a call to uh, Richard Huff, who, uh, Huff. He's really knowledgeable on this stuff about, uh, kind of like what Todd Shield was saying earlier about uh, funding for replacement of these structures. Apparently there's none right now and no grants available, but they're, they got a database going on right now and um, they're working within the next two years to possibly get grant money. And I just want to see like exactly how much it would cost. All right, well, all, of, all of these are in process. Everything you mentioned. Okay, so let's go through an order. To bring it to their order, there's nothing structurally wrong with that. Like, they're just fine. Todd's got a couple of bolt holes that were broke off and didn't match them. This is a fine that's going to come through. So it doesn't matter what strength is. I will, I will tell you when that bridge is replaced, it should go higher. And uh, we've seen the pictures. We've got one more. Yeah, I was a deck board, pot glue, they went through there and heads were closed. So there's really nothing wrong with that bridge, okay? The other one we talked about, Fuel Heights, that one there, we've been watching that one for a long time. That is on the program to 20 foot, and we will need funding for that unless we just pull the trigger on budget time, that's when we do this. Of saying, let's put that one on the plate for next year. That would need to be engineered, okay? Uh, that's very good. Could we use ARPA funds for that? ARPA's done. It's done. Right. And, if, and the bridge uh, funds, uh, the program that this was mentioning, we got 100% paid for a bridge right there from each road. Okay? So we were lucky uh, because most times it's 80 20. That's 100%. So that one is good. And that would be the one that, that would really mess up the town with that bridge because that was supposed to be closed. Okay? Uh, Stringer is not saying. It no, it's not sinking, it's no, rusting. But the one by uh, Dockside, potentially, uh, if we do the pictures of that, the historic pictures of it, and it's lost a foot and a half of head space. Uh, 21 inches. This vaccine huff was there when they put the bridge in. <laughs> but, so that one there, what really happened is, you have the steel plate arch, you have compression of the, of the top. All those heavy loads going over there actually push that one down yeah. the top of it. But looking at how the sides were shaped and comparing it to the two photographs, it appears that that one could have potentially sunk. Okay, it could have. Not all of it, but I bet you it's a contributing factor. We've applied twice for that bridge. That job is two and a half million bucks. Okay, that's going to need funding. Now, 
Dual heights, that's one that we should probably potentially fit into um, our, our rules on the over meters budget, okay? But that one there, when we do dock side, you need actually that whole road there has to be reconstructed to some extent, okay? There's also some erosion issues of water coming down the hill from the west. Is west? South. Too south, yeah. It's coming from the south. So that would have to be in there also. That's why that job went up to three and a half north. Because it was the whole road from the intersection by Lindy's all the way up past where the Thomas is driving up the hill there. A little bit. So those are the discussions we have to have on there um, in our budget. To the actual program is done there. I was the construction, I was the program manager for construction and development for the program, for the local program. Okay, so I know all the guys that do it, but it's now run by the state again. They took it back, so they're doing it again. The money, even though we got 100% there, and we're trying now for the second time to get the ARIP, that's a discretionary only, we say it's a one time, well, that's the first time. But the other discretionary that we tried to do on Lindy's, that one is 50 million a year. We tried it twice. I don't know if we can write it any better than we did because that affects uh, upstream boats. I mean, there's boats that already go over there by docks that they get underneath there. Yeah. I've had boats that are John. You see the little ones they got? They get through the little dinghy boats. Really? You well, can barely get a jet ski through there. It's that bridge is down 21 inches when I was a kid. It's like this, yeah. this far. It's, it's 18 inches for the floor. Yeah. I, I guess what I'm just asking for permission to like look and, and like Stringer's Bridge Road. Like I called a guy named Phil from uh, the Department of Transportation or something with structures. The guy from DOT re put me to yep. Phil uh, and he told me that again, town has to pay for it right now as of now uh but you know you can look for different avenues of funding so i guess i'm just asking permission if richard how many guys you want to talk to the same guy that i talked to the same guy that ty talked to okay and an engineer that would get them involved you have to coordinate with the county guy and the dot okay but if you, if you want to chase it around those grant programs are online and they're set cycles but the thing is, you pay money to apply, just like the one we talked about years ago, the cheap one, that's what you have to do. But then, when you build it, you have to design and construct it according to federal standard, which really increases the cost. Of it. Now, are you getting a better break? Yes, okay. Is it worth that much more than one that we designed itself, like when you replace uh, Carver School Road? So look at that one, uh, we have a price on that. But the inflation on, Road bridge construction is absolutely crazy. I mean, you may think that's well, 100,000. No, that's a half a million. Okay. Um, this job here is not going to go for the three and a half million because we're not going to, I don't think we're going to get into that. Okay. Uh, but the money you have to spend at the beginning, then you may not get it. Okay. But you need.